Alrighty, today is a Thursday. It's Thursday at about, uh, it's almost 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm a little behind schedule. A little bit to talk about. Let me try the coffee first. Sorry for the slurping, but it's hot. We've got uh, the Hughes Fire down in Southern California, which they went up to 10,000 acres quickly. And then got, they did a heck of a job on it last night. I'll show you why. But we're going to talk about um, potential snow in the Sierra Nevada on Saturday afternoon, maybe into sun Sunday morning, low elevation snow, two to three inches, maybe more up top. Then we've got uh, Bay Area temperatures, which have been, you know, frost advisories, freeze warnings in the morning, and then temperatures well above the average. Yesterday and the last couple of days, we've had temperatures in the upper 60s, low 70s in some places. And today will be no exception. Today we're going to see mid-60s, maybe a couple upper 60s, maybe a low 70. And then we cool down significantly as that Sierra snow weather system impacts us, but probably not in terms of rain. And Southern California has the chance to get some very beneficial rain from this system that's coming in. And we'll show you what, I'll show you what I mean. So here we are, the dangerous fire weather conditions, Southern California. They're, they're 1%, 2% of rainfall average. They are under the gun till they get rain. And there looks like the potential for rain, light rain, which is really important because you get heavy rain down there now after these fires, you're going to have a mess. But light rain would really help mop up. So that's what it looks like. Let's take a look at the Hughes fire right now. So First thing I want to say about the Hughes fire, it erupted yesterday. I was watching it all day, it erupted after I did my thing yesterday here with you. And I was watching it and I was watching the media outlets trying to triangulate what, what's really happening. Of course, watch duty is your best uh, opportunity to figure that out. But there's, you know, fire in L.A., that's what you heard. And what the media outlets are like, oh, fire in L.A. So they're picturing the Palisades, right? And that there was a, the very different fires are very different. There's crown fires, there's brush fires, there's house fires. They're very different. And any firefighter will tell you that they're very different. And this fire is very different than the Palisades fire. It's a fire. It's dangerous and it's bad and it needs to be squashed and bad things could happen or will happen. But they're very different fires. So when this thing broke out up here for instance uh this is kind of the castaic area where it started up in the uh, recreational region started here and then by about four or five o'clock it was down to here well first thing you note is you don't have a lot of there's not a lot of homes in there fortunately it's low brush it's chaparral and oak trees oak trees don't grow that tall maybe 40 feet 30 feet something like that i don't even know but not very tall but you go to the palisades and you were having and same with um um, the the uh, other the Eaton fire in those landscaped areas you have tall trees they're just tall up there's pines I'm not even sure what the the the, um, the, the landscapes look like but they're, they're you have trees taller trees so those trees in the Palisades were sending embers on with 40 50 mile an hour winds a mile ahead and starting fires there so you put the fire out here you draw a line but then you a mile a mile is a long way. So that was what was going on in these kind of urban rural interface fires in this rural or um, rural area, the sagebrush and such, not as high, not as able to develop into a crown fire, which is any firefighter will tell you is as bad as it gets when it goes from tree chop to tree chop to tree chop because tree chop because it it's right. There's nothing to slow it. It just it, it goes un, unfettered in this case. You've got this low burning, fast burning, probably not burning as hot, um, but moving quickly um, through the sagebrush. But fighting that fire is a different strategy. And they crushed it yesterday. Cal Fire is awesome. And the way they, the, 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 they manage the ridge lines. I was watching the fire roads and how they manage those. It's awesome, especially with the new fire support they have. But the first thing you note is there's Lake Castaic. So yesterday when this fire broke out, I'm like, okay, well, most of the fire was, <clears throat> it's, this is kind of the, this was the bulk of the fire yesterday. And it was running into this lake and they knew it. So they drew a big fire line here, a big break here. So it couldn't jump. And then they go, okay, what's going to happen is, and it did happen is the fire came around the, the west or the east flank and they fought it there and they let it burn into the lake or they, you know, ma managed it as best they could. So Different kinds of fires, always keep that in mind. Like only because it's, we talk about fires so much and there's house fires, there's urban fires, there's firestorms, there's, there's uh, you know, it, 
they're they're all very different and vegetation and what's burning is huge okay so this is uh, watchduty.org this orange area represents the hot spots that are probably being maintained are being maintained and probably being you know they're trying to be stamped out but not active fire active fire are these red areas which would make sense because that was the part of the fire yesterday that they had to fight most aggressively because there was no natural break and today the winds are less but still av available to the fire but they're getting a really good handle on the fire um let's see if i can go here let's see if i do this okay so this is the fire as of the last uh, half hour or so and you can see it's kind of squished down it's not really the smokes it's blowing you can see the smokes laying over but generally not a dark colored smoke and generally looks much better than it did yesterday it was yesterday at this time it was or not this time but at four o'clock it was like oh my gosh trouble right um okay so this is mexico baja they got a big fire burning down there don't they um not real populated down there i don't know I, that's in the hills not sure. I'll have to check that one out. I'll look into that for tonight. Um, and then a little fire in Sandy, south of San Diego. And then you don't see any smoke in the Castell or the Hughes Fire area. And then you see the West Slope of the Sierra Nevada. It's a beautiful bluebird day. This is the visible satellite. It is on my homepage, um, so you can link to that. Just it's fun to look at. I mean, I mean, right? Look at that. It's like, oh, what's going on? I mean. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, so this map is the national map. I've been going to show, starting to show this more. Hang on, try not to slurp. That was better. My wife hates it when I, I slurp. Um, okay, so this is, I show this because you can at a glance go boom, this is what's going on. And what you notice is there's not a lot going on. Most of the activities down here in Southern California, in that area, and then some small craft advisories up in Northern California. Uh, some frost, uh, fr winter storm concerns here, and very cold air in this region. The problem out here is that cold air is going to hang on another 24 hours. There were temperatures in down by New Orleans, down the Gulf states, down where they don't get below freezing. They got they were single digits, single digits. So you know, almost a foot of snow in, in New Orleans. So just a you know an all time event. Uh, it's moderating, but it's hard to get cold air out. So it takes a while for the the, the air to warm. So you're going to be seeing some you know there'll be another morning at least of issues in these areas and perhaps at airports. For us, it's nothing but blue skies, sort of a bummer, but that's that is what it is. It'd be, it's beautiful. Uh, Mount Tamalpais, we look from there oftentimes. Right now we're on Sutro Tower looking towards Golden Gate Bridge is right here. You can't, you can barely see it right here. Just beautiful. Okay, I'm, what was I gonna, oh, there's Point Bonita right there. That's one of my favorite spots. Just because if, if you're, if you haven't been to the Bay Area, go to, the, if it's open, I don't know if it's open right now, but that Point Bonita Lighthouse is kind of a little nugget. You know where it is. It's, it's kind of a little nugget. And then this Marin County watershed. Do you know what's interesting about this? <laughs> is um, it, they wanted to develop all this, all that Marin County, up by Cronkite and out towards Point Bonita. There's is military bases and stuff, but they wanted to develop it. And um, that is when I think Marin started it. The TPL, Trust for Public Lands, bought all this land. I think, I can't remember what it was. I want to say it was in the 60s. I mean, the foresight, I mean, you imagine if that had been built up, but now it's just the most magical, beautiful. I mean, you're in San Francisco. I have friends who get on their road bikes jump on 19th avenue or easier route go out by um out by the lands uh, lands end but over the golden gate bridge uh to tip around get some coffee up 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 and then down into point bonita and out to cronkite and then back around and it is uh, it's you do that that's i mean you live in this urban area and you have that opportunity to be just be boom gone tpl trust for public lands this awesome that's kind of the cool thing about marin is that they figured that out and one last thing about Marin. Okay, I, I, now I better do weather. Okay, so um, this is uh, down towards Whitney. This is Bishop, our, uh, Owens Valley again. I just love this shot because it shows the diversity in our weather. In other words, it's this a high desert pa uh, climate, and we were in the Bay Area, which is more of a you know more of a med classic Mediterranean climate. This is the GFS. This is showing you kind of where the jet stream is and where the energy is the the red areas and yellow areas represent the energy required to get lifting or instability doesn't always mean it'll be rain 
but the reds and the yellows indicate that there's if there's moisture around something's going to go down or could go down so here we go loop around the san francisco bay area and then here comes this weekend right here see it right there so that's an inside slider because it's not coming out over it's a dry system because it didn't swing in over the water it's coming down from the north and then that's your chance for rain in la that's your chance for that's your opportunity for snow up in the lake tahoe area and that's our opportunity to cool down and get below our av more average temperatures not upper 60s but upper 50s that's the weekend for the bay area and then we're going okay when's it going to rain there's another kind of a kind of a no it's, it's not an inside slider but it's a weak little vort center vorticity center that kind of slides through might create some kind of an event maybe a little bit of wind we'll see but here now we're into Saturday morning, next set, not the following Saturday, the February 1st. This looks good. That looks good. That looks good. That looks See how the, the ridge is flattening out? See that flow it becomes more zonal. And then this, this overwater trough comes in. Yeah, that looks really good. That could be awesome. Ooh, right? No, I, it, yeah. <laughs> you know, like a little kid watching a, what could happen. I mean, that, it might. That'd be awesome. So it looks like first week in February, maybe. A little slurp there okay so this is a close-up look this is us and this is sea level pressure looking for wind and rain so there's that lake tahoe see that that's wind see the railroad ties i think you can see that see how they're close together north mount shasta that's wind that's going to be a north northeast wind the wind will end up in redding and probably down towards red bluff as well and then this is this um the sad this is this saturday is that right? Yeah, Saturday. And there's that chance for snow in the mountains. And then maybe a little rain in Southern California right there. I know. We're grasping at straws here. And then these are these systems that come by early February. This is February 2nd. And that's more towards February 5th and 6th. So we will see. If we look at the total accumulation, we'll see this is total. So it's like all the way through February 5th. But it's just going to keep showing you. It's just piling on. It's, it's growing. So that's that snow potential for Lake Tahoe and the rain potential for Southern California. You see it here. It's light, 0 0.05, 0 0.04, 0 0 0.1, 0 0.1 tenth of an inch. Lake Tahoe, a couple inches of snow. But I think that'll happen. And I think Mammoth could get maybe a half foot of snow, maybe a foot of snow out of this if it, if it, if it goes the right way for them. And then we're adding on. So there's a little more rain from that system. So Southern California has the potential, right? That looks like almost a half inch down towards the hills out by where actually yeah, where this fire is so a half inch would be a lot but it's going to come slowly right so it takes a while and then those systems come in in february and we end up somewhere like that but that's still not massive rain i mean that's it, it, accumulation through february 8th for marin county is under two inches that's not that much so we'll keep our eye on it but it's just looking for any little hope we can get this is san francisco's ocean beach this is uh, a beautiful day. Surf looks pretty good today. Tides are actually good for the first time in a while. This is my window to surf. And so in the mornings, the tides have been really big. Remember those king tides? Just gets soft. But right now, the tides have got a pretty good height and super manageable, right? You can get out. And you're wondering where the rip is. The rip's right here. See that line? That white line in the blue water? That's a rip current. It's not scary. I'm just saying. But people always, rip currents are like unicorns. People aren't sure what they're looking at. And you can't, you, sometimes you got to be creative on the rips. This is um, Crystal Cove down in uh, by Laguna Beach. That picture reminds me of what, like, um, like up and down California, uh, that book by Brewer, um, or uh, three years before the mast, for three years, two years, three years before the mast, Richard Henry Dana. He writes about, he's, he's drive, they're floating up and down the coast um, and they're trading hides with the Spanish and the Indians. And they talk about this landscape a lot. And that's what it must have looked like, right? Because I don't see any telephone wires. Actually, I see some here, but I just look at that and I think, what would Cal can you imagine California back? Geez, back then, just how um, it must have been just it's a magical place anyway, but imagine back then. Okay, so there is Mount Shasta. Beautiful, beautiful clouds. Beautiful day. I think I'll pretty much I have pretty good confidence in this forecast. And there's we're gonna cool down. I think LA is gonna get some rain, which would be super beneficial. Tahoe gets some snow, and we get some rain. Looks like real rain maybe that first week in February. Okay, I think that's all I got for you today. Thanks for hanging in, uh, and we will see you back here. I'm off tomorrow. I'm going to go surf. 
Um, cause I got, I was going to, I should have surfed today, but I just, it's too much effort to surf and then go to work. You have to come home, shower, whatever. But, um, tomorrow I'll go. And then, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll try to do something in the morning. And one thing else I wanted to say is, you know, I got a nice, uh, note from a, a, a guy and he said, listen, why don't you show us how to go through these different things ourselves? Cause my goal here is to go, here are the tools, right? I just been doing it forever. So I go, oh, here's, I'm just like a juggler who can juggle. And you know, I'm, I'm nothing special. I'm just a guy who can who knows where the where the, the the Easter eggs are. And so on my links, you'll see a lot of the Easter eggs. But it, sometimes if I show you how, you almost have to go like go to Alert a Cal, California. The San, this this page, the San Diego. It's on my links. And look at the look at the available live cameras. Oh my God! Right? I mean that is you you have access to that's that's a live camera. So. You can, I mean, I sit, I spent an hour this morning just drinking coffee and looking at cameras. Just where's the snow? Where's the rain? Where's the, right? So all, what I'm, what I'm saying, just, this is true of the internet, I think. Just g get in there, dig in and start going. If I show you how to do it, you just got, you can't remember it all. There's a lot of stuff. But if you start clicking around, go, oh, that's that layer. That's the hotspot layer. That's the satellite layer. And then you get proficient at it. Then you start, that's when you really have this opportunity to, to grow. Because I, I know if you're watching this, you are interested in forecasting and you're interested in not having somebody else tell you what's going to happen. I didn't really tell you what's going to happen. I go, this is what the models say, which is our best guess. And then a little bit of local knowledge comes in. There's actually a lot of local knowledge. But you can figure this all out on your own, especially when you live somewhere. Like when you, my whole success in, in this career has been, I've been in California. My family's been in California for like six generations. So I've heard all the stories. I've seen all, I just know it. So you live in your neighborhood or your burb or your, your region. You know it. You know better than I know it. And so if you see the GFS pushing rain in and you go, yeah, when that happens, usually we see wind gusts that start coming out of the south a little bit. And they're usually up at this higher, you, there's just, it, the models can't pick up on all that local knowledge. So, all right, that's just a little extra. I will see you back here. I'll do a quick one tomorrow.